hundred levels. Basically, they decided that mankind wasn't ready for it yet because he proceeded to misuse it like he had the uh, atom or the hydrogen bomb. Now, recent evidence is very hard to get. However, in this country, a little leak occurred over here with William H. Martin in the Nation Review. Um, May of 1973 or 4, I believe. I, I can't remember now. Um, he... Um, published an article on Pine Gap and how Nixon had intended to use it in 1975 to uh, solve the energy crisis by announcing a new method of electromagnetic propulsion which would be based uh, from the Pine Gap facility. So now, from my knowledge of the, of the technology, what small knowledge I do have from my uh, little viewpoint, uh, Pine Gap has all of the inherent uh, uh, descriptions necessary for a high voltage, low frequency, power broadcast station to broadcast electricity to various receivers like cars and submarines and uh, aircraft that are tuned to that power station. It's just a more efficient um, version of the Exmouth facility here at the Northwest Cape. Um, so it's, <coughs> it's right here on our doorstep, is it? Oh, yes. The big question you have to ask yourself, uh, Guy, is why would such a thing be kept secret? I mean, People at the levels that are covering it up, uh, I, I know some of them uh, personally, and they aren't, in my opinion, villains. They're very uh, sincere humanists. They are trying to solve planet Earth, uh, trying to bring unity their way. You speak of them as though they were, they were collective rather yes. than singular, is that right? Yes. Um, Dr. Cable, uh, as I mentioned before in uh, Melbourne at the Aeronautic Research Lab, tried to explain to me about they, he mentioned we as though it was they, an organization, a group of scientists, uh, academics, industrialists, he, he couldn't be exact. Now, he never put a name to it, but I said, well, do you mean like a club? And he said, yes, but no. Um, we are aware of these problems, and we're trying to solve them in the best way we know how. Uh, granted, there are things that should be kept uh, from the public eye until we do have some sort of a unity in the world economy. Uh, but I think the manner in which it's uh, been uh, gone about is most unfortunate. Uh, I would not have taken the same tag myself. The power politics involved in keeping the secrets that we now have across the planet have allowed, well, in my opinion, groups that aren't uh, capable of handling uh, control of the planet to take power. So what basically you're saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that we've got a situation where you maintain various countries have perhaps a top-level intelligentsia who are in possession of a common set of facts which yes. which transpose country boundaries now I and mean, it's a worldwide sort of yes. thing. In Russia, uh, involved in this would be the Russian physicist who has been in the news recently uh, with the civil rights movements, Dr. Andrei Sakharov. Also in his country, uh, an ex-KGB agent some 25 years, but a physicist and uh, a former uh, hydrogen bomb uh, project uh, development engineer, or sorry, physicist, is uh, Dr. Bruno Porta, uh, Pontecorvo, working on gravitic engines in Siberia. Um, as I told you, in the States, it was uh, Dr. Teller and the affiliates there. I don't know all of their names. But uh, these people have all been working together as um, scientists who go above governments. And, Look, they're sincere. I can't blame them for doing this. It's just that they have lost control of what they tried to set up. H has that association got a name? I don't think so. When I worked with the um, FBI, there was a political and financial institution that I was um, ordered to investigate with many other agents, and it was called the, uh, the Illuminati, which is a general term meaning the enlightened or the uh, wise ones. Um, it, uh, the investigation of this led me to the Council on Foreign Relations and to the Club of Rome, which are linked by joint directorships under Carol Wilson. Um, this is, again, another tale, but if you put yourself in the scientist's position in the mid-50s, what you see is that you've got a technology that, if announced to the public, would cause mass reactions in the economy, in social moves, and in cultural reactions that could probably bring about the demise of the whole human civilization. A simple example would be this. 
But the scientists who come out in the mid-50s and you say, we have a process which will allow us to get rid of tires, allow us to get rid of the petrol engine, hence the petrol, hence all the uh, dependent industries. Uh, it'll be available for you in 24 months' time. It'll only cost you three or $4,000. Now, what kind of his right mind would buy a new petrol engine car if he could have one of the new ones in two years that don't need roads and they run on electricity and no uh, petrol necessary? They'd all stop their buying trends, which would then collapse the economies that would be building the other one in 24 months. If you had a central world authority uh, like Dr. Pache's Club of Rome group want, then if you announced, when you controlled all the nations and the economies, if you announced and said, uh, you've got a new car that does this, nobody would panic because they know that if their industry became redundant, they would be retrained and paid while they're doing it in some other support industry. We don't have that uh, facility on the planet at the moment because we're greatly disordered and many of the cultures fight against each other. Scientists, industrialists, engineers found this problem in the mid-50s. Now, we're playing their part. So we sit here and we say, how do we get world unity? The United Nations, the League of Nations had failed. You couldn't get any two or three of them to agree to turn their sovereignty over to a third party. You couldn't come out and field an army from the United Nations or League of Nations or any, anywhere, even a corporate army, and tell the people of Earth you're taking over, as some people have suggested the multinationals might do. You can't do that because the mass resistance would be worse than uh, the French resistance to Hitler. It would destroy the unity they were trying to get. So by peaceful discussion over the uh, conference table and by force, it wasn't possible. Yet as the scientific community looked at this new technology, it reached into all human endeavor, touched many points of life. They said, look, if we develop this, completely develop it into a social, technological, integrated model, away from the rest of people in islands or in back rooms, how do we do it? Keep it quiet even from the politicians. At some point later, after 1956, 57, 58, some point later we'll have it ready to announce to the world as a global system. Then all we've got to do is figure out how to convince them to give it a try in unity. Right, well this this was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Are we now saying that this is approaching the time? I think we are. And it's not like some prophecy or something. It's just looking at events in the media. For the first 10 years of that 20 year period you're talking about, people that saw UFOs or flying saucers were nuts. They would play that way in the media. It was a bad thing to even talk about it. Now, toward the end of this 20 year period, if you see one, you're a great guy in the neighborhood. Everybody wants to talk to you. Everybody wants to know you. Pilots, physicists, all kinds of people are coming forward now. Presidents, dictators. Yes, I've seen a UFO. Now, to me, the shift in the public conditioning uh, medium is to get people ready for the announcement of the new technology. Now, scientists aren't going to come out. Industrialists aren't going to come out and say, okay, here it is, children. Here you go. The new model for planet Earth using this technology must be independent of any established government or order. It can't be Russian or capitalist or dictatorial. It's got to be independent. And the only way you can do it is a, an external culture, whether it be called from the ocean bottom, uh, whether it's from the Bermuda Triangle, or whether it's from outer space. They have got to see it in this way so that for a short time, the masses will overlook their cultural differences to unite, to form this one world order. Then after seven or eight years, if you can hold the ruse that long, you explain to them, this is how we brought peace. I still maintain, I don't think that it'll work because at the top, these organizations are fighting. I'd like to ask you a direct question. You work in the field of anti-gravitics. Could you make what we call a flying saucer? Oh, yes, with adequate funds and time, sure. Um, I'd still be doing it uh, for the research organizations if I hadn't differed in philosophy. That's where I got in trouble because I stood up and said, why are you doing this? And uh, it wasn't for me to know. UFOs, if they don't exist, or these electric flying saucers, uh, if they don't exist in our current technology, I'll give it to the world. I'll be a hero, but I'll tell you right now, I don't need to do that. It's already done. This does not mean that in the past, before 47, 49, whenever the first flying saucers were uh, supposedly sighted on this planet, does not mean that the time before that was uh, to be explained by Earth technology. It wasn't. Even back in the Bible, in uh, 